Welcome back to the Music Marketing Podcast. Today we're joined with Abby McCarthy. Hi. Hello. How are you both? Good. Good, how are thank you? you. Yeah, good. It's nice to actually see people. I know. It's so strange. <laughs> wow, this is kind of council's work, I yeah, suppose. Very yeah. This is our first podcast <laughs> after the whole lockdown thing. It's the first in-person one, so yeah, it's a special one. It is. Um, I should probably introduce you. For those who don't know Abby, I mean... You do so much. There's so much in the industry. <laughs> Thank you. She's on BBC Kent as an introducing show. BBC Radio 1, you're on a lot. You've got your own TV show. Do you do your own gig nights as well? Yes, I do. Yeah, the good comedy club. Wow. ongoing. I mean, you're probably better at introducing yourself than I am. Oh, well, no, that was a good, that was a good attempt. Um, what do I do? So, yeah, BBC Introducing in Kent is, is my main thing. Mm-hmm. Doing that every single week, every Saturday night, bringing you the best new music from my region, Kent, <laughs> Kent touch this, Kent represent. Uh, and then, yeah, occasionally popping up on Radio 1, uh, covering different shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to be on this weekend, actually, oh, cool. uh, on the introducing show, chatting to everybody that's nominated for the Mercury Prize. Mm-hmm. So looking forward to that. And then the TV show that you mentioned is on 4 Music. And again, it's really focused on new artists. I'm super lucky. I've literally got the best job in the world. So artists come in and play live and then I get to just hang out with them and ask them questions Sounds afterwards. Great. Yeah, and then um, a show as well for BBC Sport called Match the Day X, which is um, kind of my other passion, which is football. So yeah, a lot of music stuff, but sometimes a bit of sport. Who do you Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh no, is it going to get, is the is the atmosphere in this room about to change? Yes. So, yes. So <laughs> There's the door. Yeah. There'll be a lot of anti-Chelsea people and there'll also be a lot of people in America who are like, who is Chelsea? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like, it's true. don't you mean soccer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of the work that you do in the music industry is a lot with like up and coming artists emerging. Has that always been like your thing? Yeah, absolutely. I've always been like obsessed with music like ever mm. since I can remember. Yeah. And then through doing BBC Introducing, obviously I'm meeting new artists and managers and people in the industry all the time. So I've kind of just formed my connections yeah. that way. Yeah. So how did it all start then? Have you always been in music from like a young age or did you kind of find your feet a little bit first? Um, so I've had a kind of interesting route. So I went to uni, I went to Warwick University yeah. to study theatre and performance, darling. Oh. I really wanted to be an actress originally. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be in EastEnders preferably but I would have taken Skins that was quite cool at the time very cool Uh, and then when I was there I got really into student radio one of my friends dragged me along to the studio and we did a show together and I just loved it and I was like this makes so much sense because I love talking and I love music and that is the two things all together Uh, so just like really threw myself into that and learned so much from doing it like I was on the committee board so I'd like help with a few things like that and I presented three shows a week I helped produce other people's shows I'd do like station sound I just learned completely how a radio station worked and then as soon as I left university I was like this is this is it this is what I want to do um, and then I was really lucky. I won a student radio award when I when I left. So that felt like a nice little, oh, okay, I'm doing something right. Uh, and then as part of that, I got a bit of presenting training with the BBC um, and then just applied for all the work experience I could find. And Six Music said yes, and it was amazing. I got to go there for a month's work experience and I worked on basically all the different shows that they have um, and was just super keen, obviously. That's what you have to do. Made loads of tea got proper stuck in and you know interviewed people did loads of notes and then at the end of the month they were like how would you like to to stay on as a freelancer and I was like yes where do I sign they'd barely like finished asking and I'd already said yes uh and then yeah started working there as an assistant producer so a lot of my work kind of started as more kind of behind the scenes so I was an assistant producer at Six Music for a long time then I worked at Radio 2 worked on like the Chris Evans breakfast show worked with Joe Wiley uh and then And then I went in to see um, the BBC Introducing Show that I now present and just volunteered on it. I used to do notes and and make tea and and help the presenter, a guy called Jacob at the time. And then he was going off for a couple of weeks um, to someone's stag do and then a wedding. Two weekends back to back, which I think was a risk. (laughs) Um, But I was like, oh, can I can I cover? I'd really like to do that. Um, And then piloted and the you know, the bosses gave me the opportunity and then did that. And then Jacob actually left the show pretty soon after that. Um, And I took over as as a full time presenter. So that was like six years ago now, six and a half years ago. So yeah, it's been a it's been a long time. And then the more presenting I did, the more the more I realised I think this is this what this is mm. what I want to do full time. Um so I got a call from Radio One to be like, do you want to come in and and pilot? Um which for anyone listening is not getting like in an aeroplane. It basically just means going <laughs> into Radio One and pretending you're on air for an hour and they record you. Uh, so I did that and um, 
And then, yeah, I've sort of been covering like specialist music shows there ever since. Mm. So, yeah, amazing really to think it was just like a hobby at uni and now it's like my real yeah. job. Did you always have a passion for discovering new music as well? Because a lot of your shows are around new music, yeah. not just the BBC introducing was that always for you just growing up discovering new music? I think it was actually. I think it's because I grew up in in the like MySpace era. <laughs> um so it would be like what's my MySpace song? I want to I want my friends to think I'm like the most on it with music and I've got the best song and stuff. So I remember that and then I think when I was really getting into music it was kind of around the era of a lot of bands that are now massive like the Arctic Monkeys my favourite band um, and I remember being on like the Arctic Monkeys forum and like all the bands forums and like chatting to people and stuff like that and that felt like a really exciting time in music mm. and that was the time where I was like yeah really discovering bands for the first time myself and then telling friends about it and we were all like kind of swapping tips and stuff and I remember just getting such a buzz out of doing that and I think that's when I was like okay yeah I always want to keep on top of what what music's come in and and yeah it's always been a bit of an obsession of mine to be honest. Your journey's like super interesting because a lot of people we've spoken to in the industry, I mean, especially radio as well, mm. they've said they did a lot of voluntary work yeah. and a lot of work experience. Mm. And in a lot of our videos, we actually say like the best way to get into the industry mm -hmm. is this experience and yeah. meeting people. And a lot of people always say, well, volunteering, you should know how much you're worth. Well, how do you feel about that? Because obviously you got your start doing that. Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I think it's whatever you can manage. So I think it's not, it's not good to do free work for years that's not sustainable for anybody is it and it's and it's not fair um but i know there are a lot of work experience schemes where they cover your costs and things like that and so at least you're not losing money mm. or i think sometimes what i found was applying for this official work experience you're up against thousands of people especially mm. at the bbc like loads of people want to work there yeah so i almost did almost like unofficial work experience um so i would email like producers of shows that i admired all presenters and just like be like can I come in and see the show for a day I just I'll just sit in the corner and I'll be a sponge and I'll just absorb it all and you know be a like little shadow for the day kind of thing um and a lot of people were like yeah absolutely of course like and I got to see so many different shows through doing that and it meant I got a really good understanding of radio because it wasn't just it wasn't just like my local introducing show I got to see a couple of different shows at Radio 1 that I really admired like I remember I went to go and see Zane's show and I saw Hugh when he was on at the weekends and and I went, I dropped in to see Kiss, I saw Heart, I saw, you know, commercial radio as well. Um, and that was really a really good experience. And through doing that, you naturally meet the producer and, you know, the rest of the team. And you, as long as you you kind of foster those connections, you never know when a job's going to come up at one of those places mm. and, you, and you might be given an opportunity. So I think work experience is important, but yeah, don't don't do too much stuff for free. Maybe just say to people, you know, can I take you for a coffee? Can I shadow the show? So at least it's just one day. Uh, sometimes people's work experience is like a month and it's like, yeah, it's quite hard to live your life when you're not making any money for a month. Mm. Um, but I think those things are changing because, and I think it does need to change. Otherwise it's, it sometimes means there's only certain types of people that can get into certain industries. And I think the music industry has a big problem with that where it's a little bit about... Um, who's privileged, who has enough money and who has the connections and things like that. Mm. But that's why whenever people email me being like, can I come and see your show? Or um, here's my demo, what do you think? Um, or, you know, just asking me advice about being a presenter or a producer. I'm always so happy to help because I remember what it's like to be in mm. their shoes. You know, I haven't been in the industry that long. And I think people always remember that. People always remember that hustle uh, at the start. So I think... People shouldn't be put off if they don't know anybody in the music industry or the radio industry. Just reach out to people and often they'll they'll want to help you because they can see that you have that passion mm. and, you know, they'll just help you channel it and maybe introduce you to some other people. It's one of those things, once you meet one person, it just snowballs massively. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, the radio industry is quite small. I actually know quite a lot of people now. This is nice. And mm. same with music, really. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's actually a really small industry. Yeah. You mm. meet someone, you're like, oh, you know so-and-so, you know so-and-so, <laughs> and you turn out, you all know each other, basically. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, and you know that person, and we went yeah. to school together and you did that, yeah. yeah. You mentioned, like, submitting demos, and obviously our audience is just, like, mainly artists. Mm -hmm. We were at BBC and Juicy. We saw you do your um, 
on stage, I think it was, was it Slaves? Oh, yeah, you chatted with one of the guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. I chatted with Laurie, really yeah, about cool. his journey, yeah. Uh, we also uh, went to the Sam Fender one, mm-hmm. and it was all about like how, how Sam Fender broke on the radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, for your From your perspective, what is important for an artist for their journey through radio to breaking? Because with Sam Fender, they, they said it was like, the support he got from mm. radio mm. essentially seen it, broke yeah. him. Yeah, you might have even yourself probably like broken someone by like playing them on a show. Where do you even start as an artist? Like, where is the starting point? Because you're not going to get on rotation at Radio One. What is the starting point for an artist? Well, that's why BBC Introducing is just the absolute best thing because it's just about great new music. It doesn't matter if you've got a record label. It doesn't matter if you've got a big manager. It's literally just about the quality of the music. And there's like 36 BBC Introducing shows, I believe it is, around the country. So we're kind of the ears to the ground for all of our different regions, you know, representing everything that's happening in the UK. So anybody that is living in Kent, where I I rep, the music will come straight into my inbox. I'll have a listen. And if I like it, I'll play it on the radio. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So when I open up the inbox, I often like listen blind just because I want to, I don't want to be influenced by anything. And then if I really like the music, obviously I'll open their page, have a little read, oh, where they're from, you know, what their influences are and stuff like that. Um, so that's why BBC Introducing is great because it doesn't matter if you've got like one Twitter follower mm-hmm. or, you know, yeah, you're, it's your first song yeah. and it's not recorded perfectly. It's recorded at home into your laptop. If I see the potential of it, I will literally just share it on my show that Saturday night. And I think that's what's great. BBC Introducing is like just evening the playing field because... Everybody has an opportunity. If you channel all of your energy into making a great song, then I'm going to want to play it, aren't I? Everyone and everyone remembers hearing, you know, their favorite band or a song that they love for the first time. And I just feel so lucky that my job is getting to do that. Like I get to, you know, play, yeah, like a Slaves or a, or a sports team or Josie Mann. Or I'm trying to think. There's so many different exciting acts kind of coming through um, my show right now. I get to play them for the first time and people are like, oh, wow, this is amazing. They tell all their friends about it. And then in however many years or however many months, they are this fully fledged artist. Mm-hmm. But everyone has to start somewhere. Yeah. And BBC Introducing is just the perfect place to go to to get to get mm-hmm. the ball rolling. What happens in those uh, many months that that gets them like on rotation to the next level? What is it... Is it that like they're picked up by another DJ who supports mm-hmm. them again and again and mm-hmm. hears them on your show and then other DJs hear it? Or is it a case of your show gets them more fans, which gets them more buzz? What what really is it that Yeah, I think it's quite a few things. I guess people are like are listening to my show and then probably quite like them, like I was saying, share it with their friends and stuff. But I think the the really great thing about Bibs Introducing is it's like just this huge machine which which sounds a bit scary but it's in a good way so I'll play something that I really really like and at the click of a button I can go onto the uploader and I could be like right Jack Saunders at Radio 1 or like that he'll play it on the indie show Hugh Stevens will love this Full Tag will love this oh actually I think this song's going to sound good on Six Music or let's send this to Joe Wiley at Radio 2 and then the song's there and then those DJs listen to it and if they like it They'll begin playing it on their shows, which are even bigger. Um, and then we can put, you know, artists forward for opportunities like introducing track of the week on Radio 1 or 1 Extra, which means that artist gets their song played on every single daytime show on those networks, which is a huge reach and, you know, a big deal. Um, we can put acts forward for Made of Ale sessions, you know, the legendary Made of Ale studios. You get to go there and record a session that gets played out on air. We can put people forward to play at major festivals, you know, Reading and Leeds or Glastonbury, the dream. Um, so lots can happen just from uploading, getting that local radio play. And then if I can see and my team can see, you know, you're playing live and you've like really got something about you. The songs are getting better and better. You've really got a plan. There's an EP, then there's an album. We're just there to facilitate and make sure as many people hear you as possible. So it's basically all about the music. Always. Which is amazing because I feel like um, as the industry's changed and it's Mm -hmm. become so social media led, a lot of artists believe that it was so much better in like the 70s, 80s, (laughs) 90s and it's like social media's destroyed it. Mm. But you're saying that it's still so music led yeah, it's the music absolutely. that completely takes over and it's what breaks the artist yeah I think sometimes new bands coming through or new rappers or new artists there's like yeah a pressure for their social media to mm. to be a certain way and I think sometimes there are too many distractions in like the modern day world like people are like yeah focus on their social media and like what do their press shots look like and you know like all of these things and actually 
if you put all of your money and all of your resources, all of your energy into making a great song, then that is going to give you so many opportunities off that. And then further down the line, you can work on, you know, I'm not saying make your social media look rubbish because that's, <laughs> that's stupid. But I just think as long as it's like functional and you're using it to engage with your fans and stuff and the music's really good, you're you're doing enough in, in those early stages. Mm-hmm. I'd say radio is the only platform really that is still like that, where mm-hmm. it is all about the music now. Yeah. And I think other places, you've kind of just got to be a bit more going on as an artist like for example like we look at the charts now and it still is tiktok driven <laughs> yeah, as well yeah, do you really find is. that like tiktok is bringing in music from a different place so you've got your introducing coming one um from one direction then you've got tiktok songs kind of just like being forced onto the radio in that mm. side do you find that that's being influential yeah there's a few different ways to like break now i guess isn't there as as an artist it's yeah the kind of traditional radio route in that yeah you get played on your your local introducing show you get played on national if they like you enough and they play you enough you'll eventually make it onto the playlist and then you have this totally new side of it where it's like anybody can just suddenly become a viral hit on tiktok mm. or their video on youtube could just all of a sudden rack up loads of views because there's a certain like hot rapper on it or it's filmed in a certain, you know, destination and people want to see it or, you know, a grime daily put it out and that already means loads of people are going to watch it. So it's interesting because, yeah, you're having these like viral sensations and then you're having, yeah, the more kind of traditional roots. And I don't know, I think I worry about these TikTok songs because like you say, they're dominating the charts and... I think a lot of them to me aren't really songs. <laughs> no. It's trends. because the way obviously the way it works, 15 seconds, if it's got a 15 second hook, that means it can break on TikTok. Mm. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a really good fully fledged 3 yeah. minute song mm. that you're going to love. So I don't know. And I think sometimes with these things it it has a moment, doesn't it? And then it's on to the next thing. So TikTok is mm. absolutely having its moment right now but it might be like another platform in six months and stuff. So I think sometimes artists maybe make the mistake where they put all their eggs in one basket. It's like, right, okay, TikTok's the thing. We need to, right, let's just make our music sound like it would do well on TikTok. And they like almost transform their sound and their image mm-hmm. and stuff to make to make them appealing on that platform. And then in six months, it might be like, do you remember TikTok? That, that yeah. thing yeah. we did, like we yeah. all got it in lockdown. It was really weird. Yeah. Um. So I think... That's why it's always about staying true. Like I was saying before, music is always at the core of it and staying really true and authentic to you and your sound. You always want to be proud of your music. Like you don't want to look back on it in six months time and be like, oh yeah, we made that song for TikTok and it's, oh, I really hate it. Let's delete it from the internet forever. You know, always make stuff that that you like. And then if it happens to have a moment on socials, that's great. But, you know, no pressure mm. is what I'd say. Radio seems to have been like one of the only things in the industry that's just like stay put. Like it has yeah. to, yeah. Have you found that obviously with like major things like TikTok and stuff happening um, and people being more social media mm. focused, has your job had to change much or has it always been pretty similar? Like listen to the music player if I want to play it or have other things had to change over the years? I'm trying to think actually in terms of if it's changed my job a bit. I guess I can discover more music online through certain things. Like even on Instagram before, on like, you know, the Discover page mm. where it's kind of linked to lots of different artists and things that you've been looking at I've like seen artists like doing covers and I'm like oh they sound really good and then you go on then you kind of and then you find their original music mm. um, or like artists sharing other people's music and their stories and things like that I think it means that you can you can sh- like yeah artists can share other artists music really easily and like kind of join fan bases and stuff so I think it's really good in that way and I guess for me, it's just really nice because people that listen to my show, it's kind of easier to like interact with them. Mm. Um, so it's just like, yeah, whether it's like having a conversation with someone on Twitter or like on Instagram or, you know, whatever. So I think that's been the main thing is that, yeah, social media makes you feel more connected. Yeah. I think there's a really dark side, a horrible side of social media. But I think there is a, a lot of positives where, especially for music, yeah, people can share music far and wide. And yeah, I just feel like I can connect with people a bit more, which mm-hmm. is really nice and you also have your show um what's your show called again the one on four. Oh, four music box yeah. fresh is the strand yeah <laughs> you were like i have a show <laughs> i was like what what's going on um, so that is more looking at emerging acts as well but you also said that you've had like you've had some big names on it like yeah grennan yes yeah, so um, we've got we've got like a couple of different things on it so um we have um 
a program called Fresh Focus, which is part of it, yeah. where that is kind of somebody that we are tipping for big things. Mm -hmm. And people that have come through that, um, like Billie Eilish, you've had like Tom Grennan, um, you've had like Mahalia, you've had Easy Life. Mm. Um, so yeah, people that that at the time we were tipping for big things yeah. and it's paid off. So that's always like super nice to see. Mm. Um, and then Fresh Forward's a little bit more of a, a kind of a show like this, just like me and some artists hanging out and it will be um, a new artist, but then also it will be more established artists that can come in and tell us about the projects they're working on. So we've mm. had, you know, we've had like Tom Walker and we've had like Sigala and Becky Hill. We've had Lewis Capaldi. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun because I get to kind of talk to to some of the bigger names, but also chat to those artists that are right at the start of things. And yeah. often it's like their first TV thing. Um, Bet they're super nervous. Yeah, they're often like super nervous. I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> and then obviously they smash their session and then they blow up and I'm like, told you so. Is there any sort of pattern you see there with those people that you've sort of spotted and then they've broken? Is there anything like, I don't know, style of music or like personality or the way they're on socials? Is there any sort of pattern or do you genuinely oh, think it's just question. like good quality music that's I think yeah I think through. I think the music yeah always shines through if it's amazing but I mean if you look at someone like Lewis Capaldi he's just such a he's such a character mm. so for me as a presenter he's like a pleasure to interview because it's just it's just hilarious it's yeah. just the two of us mucking around um and I think people as they realized like just how funny he was mm. and like he really connected with people in that way on social media he's just become this absolute superstar yeah so that's been a really cool thing to witness but i think easy life have done the same in that they've always had like quite a close re relationship with their fans on social media as well so i think it's a combination of like yeah being like a really good personality making great music and always like making time for your mm. fans um and also, sometimes it's just people doing something a bit differently as well. Um, because, hard to do. Yeah, it's hard really to do hard. because music's been around quite a while. Like, <laughs> how do you actually sound original? So when people do or they put a spin on something, I think people just get really excited about it. Mm. Do you find that there's other things that they can do to boost their profile and credibility? Like, you say it's just about the music, but, like, when you're going out to uh, other DJs who mm. have, like... Um, like playing like a whole range of artists, it, things like live slots, bit press coverage. Is there anything where in that pitch or their EPK where you think is something where that is going to get them more attention? Mm. Or is it just a case of like, it's just about the music wherever you go on the radio? I think it's always good if you can drop in a juicy press shot. You know, this blog said I'm the best thing they've heard this year you know that all of those things are great like I think press at the start as well is is hugely important and I think sometimes press go earlier on artists as well hmm. so I think yeah if you can you know reach out to blogs and stuff and get them to write about you that's a really good thing and that's some nice quotes to put like you say in, in your EPK I think that's cool as well and I think more than ever like the live sphere is so important. So I think if you can say, you know, I've done a sold out show in my hometown, even if it's the smallest venue in your hometown, that's really exciting and shows that there is a buzz and you're becoming that band locally. I think it's about conquering your local scene and then becoming, you know, the next big thing in the UK and mm. then the world. Why not? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think live's really important to put in your EPK, like where you're at, where you're touring, who you've supported, where you're playing. Lots of good press bits if you have it. Um, but again, don't put too too much pressure on that because I think sometimes it takes a while to build to build up those things. Mm. Mm. It's interesting what you said about the whole idea of like conquering your town first. Mm -hmm. um, mm. We've talked about this quite a lot, and I think it's so key. You think mm. about some of the biggest artists in the world, and they're known locally first, like most recently Sam Fender and mm -hmm. Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of artists try to sort of jump to London or yes. or a major city, first of all, and forget that like the local people are the ones that are going to love you first. And I guess that's why BBC Introducing is so amazing. Yeah. You can build that. Yeah, because you can really build a following locally. And I think they're going to be like the really dedicated part of your fan base mm. that, because they were there right at the start. You know, they saw you play in a pub to 30 people and they'll be so excited to see you when you go and play Wembley or you know whether it's Newcastle Arena or wherever it is um, so I think that's really important yeah don't like jump the gun and think everything's you know about London I think actually it's about really like cementing your story and your identity in where you're from I think that's really important mm -hmm. and you've kind of mentioned this 
question, uh, you've answered this question in like parts, but how do you get your music on the radio? We get this asked so often. And obviously <laughs> you, B, there's BBC introducing and the yep. uploading portal, but like in general, what are the processes that an artist should go through? Mm-hmm. Do you pitch directly to the DJ? Is it the producer? What mm-hmm. should be in your pitch? What? How do you answer that question? Yeah, I get asked that a lot as well, so it'd be good to clear it up. So... There are a few different ways. So if you've been played quite a lot on your local BBC Introducing show and you're looking to get more regular national radio play, it might be a good time to employ a radio plugger. So basically it's just someone that can represent you and go into meetings with people, you know, at Radio 1 or 6 Music or wherever you're pitching to, um, play them your music and basically tell them why you're so great. And often that can help you get you know, more regular spot plays on bigger national radio stations um, and eventually playlisting as well. But the only thing with pluggers is they can be a little bit expensive. (laughs) So I think it's making sure that you hit that button at the right time and you're not just wasting your mm. wasting your money. Um, so, yeah, I would say build it up locally first and then once you've got the national radio play is happening, happening a bit and you just want to push it on a little bit more, bring in the radio plugger. Um, but the other thing is, at the start, there's, there's no reason why you can't just hustle, you know, email the producer of your favourite radio shows or the presenter and just be like, here's my song, what do you think? Um, but with those, the, I get obviously sent so much music, it's insane. And although I love it, it's sometimes like, wow, okay, I'm actually drowning in music. <laughs> um, so for people that are sending those emails, please keep them short, please keep them snappy. I don't need your life story. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, straight in with like who you are, where you're from, link to the song don't also don't ever do like a we transfer link or anything like that just a link to the song so i can literally click on it and listen to it that's super easy as well um and then you can always attach like a press release and stuff so if i want more information i like the song i can click on it mm. and, and open it so that's quite a good way to do it because it's not like bombarding somebody with too many facts and stuff because ultimately the presenter is going to open it click on the music and they either like it or they're not sure you know so get to the music as quickly as possible i would say um but but bearing that in mind, definitely hustle and reach out to your favourite shows. Always make sure they're the right ones too. Like, don't reach out to, like, I don't know, Dampy Carter, who does the rock show, and send him a bubblegum pop tune because <laughs> that is entirely pointless, isn't it? That's just a waste of time. And he'll just be like, why have you done that? <laughs> um, so it's like, you know, also doing your research and thinking, okay, oh, okay, I make R&B music. Oh, Jam Supernova on One Extra really likes that. And, you know, there's a, there's a few other sh- that shows on One Extra that would like, oh, maybe Clara would like that at Radio 1 and just having a little bit of a, a bit of a think about it. Or oh, if it's chilled R&B, Phil Taggart could play it on Radio 1. So just like... Do your research and work out what shows your music would, sorry, what, um, yeah, what shows your music would suit. Um, I think that's really important. Otherwise, it's a lot of wasted effort, knackered, you know, typing hands for, for no reason. Um, and when you're hustling, don't keep chasing. Like, I can't get back. I literally physically couldn't get back to everybody that sent me music. I would just be, I'd be typing until I until I died (laughs) so it's um you know obviously send them an update um every month or so of how the song's doing if you feel like you need to or when you have new music but don't be one of those people that chases every week on the dot because I bet you get them a lot yeah if they haven't responded it's either because they're not into it or they haven't had time but Mm -hmm. they're going to get to it so I think I'm all for hustlers like Mm -hmm. you know I am one to get to where I am but it's like hustler pest just like (laughs) by making sure you're right yeah you're right in the right spot I think yeah so you mentioned radio pluggers as well Mm -hmm. a lot of artists like to employ like a team really early on the idea of having like radio plugger PR team I might get a manager do you think there's a point where you actually need those or do you think it's possible to do basically everything alone I think at the start you can definitely do things by yourself Mm -hmm. and actually I think it's really good for artists to learn how to do all those things and yeah. learn different aspects of the industry. But I definitely think there comes a point where you absolutely need some help because often if you're a creative or you're a musician, you get to a point and you kind of need a manager on board to do all the all the admin, all yeah. the not-so-fun stuff and just kind of give you a strategy and keep you, you know, on your toes, make sure everything's kind of going well. And like I was saying earlier, when 
when the momentum is is definitely on the up for you in terms of radio and in terms of streaming, that's when getting a radio plugger on board is is absolutely the right time. But like you say, I think sometimes artists like are like, oh, I want to look really professional and and stuff. So really early on you go onto their like Facebook page and they've got like 20 people listed as their team and you're like, who are these people? Um, and they feel pressure to, to yeah, create that team straight away. And actually, I don't, I don't think you need to. Mm. But there will be a time you have to. And I think you'll know that because you're just too busy. And, yeah. and you can't manage it all. Mm. It's the whole idea of like faking it till you make it. Yeah, it's Have a little bit. Team and it makes <laughs> yeah. you look bigger than you are. Yeah. It doesn't always work. It doesn't. Sometimes you can just see through it. <laughs> um, I think a good place to end it would be if you could tell us one artist that you think is going to be taken off um, that you see, maybe you played them on BBC Introducing. Oh, um, okay. And why you think they might be the next big thing. Oh, that's a hard one. Is that a hard there's, one? There's so, on oh, there's so many. You don't want um, to have a favourite now, do you? Yeah, I'm like, who do I pick? I would probably say Holly Humberston. Okay. I think that she is just a really incredible artist doing mm-hmm. things entirely on her terms. Um, the music is just phenomenal. She's got such a great voice. She's a really good songwriter. But also they've like really got the visuals down as well. She's mm-hmm. been like working with the same team for all her videos so far. So you really just like get a sense of who she is already, Mm -hmm. even though she's got one EP out and she's a new artist, it already in some ways feels like she's really established because, yeah, yeah, she's just, she's got it down. And I saw her supporting Louis Capaldi, actually. The last gig I went to before, well, member gigs, (laughs) uh, before lockdown kind of fully kicked in, I went to see Louis Capaldi at Wembley Arena. I said Um, we. Yeah. Oh, did you? It was a great show, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, she supported and I just thought, what an amazing thing to do, just to walk out in front of all of those people as a new yeah. artist. Like, that must be terrifying. Mm. But she just was, like, really calm and collected about it and just nailed it. So I think, yeah, she's got all the different things going on. Mm. So I think, yeah, the rest of this year and definitely next year is going to be super promising for her, I think. Nice. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank it's been you. great chatting with you. Yeah. Where can people find you online? On, like, Instagram, Twitter? Yeah, Instagram, Twitter, probably everywhere <laughs> cool great well, thanks for coming on <laughs> thank if you if you enjoyed the podcast make sure to give it a like and if you're watching on YouTube make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one <laughs> <laughs>